Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here, my buddy Ricardo. Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're talking about a Muay Thai program that you can follow along to. This is going to be sort of a what to expect if you're about to join a Muay Thai gym, if you're about to go to Thailand or maybe Singapore like Ricardo here. He's coming with me to a VOB next week and he's never done Muay Thai ever. So we're going to put him through sort of a crash course here and this is going to be what to expect when it comes to technique, conditioning, and just basic fundamentals with Muay Thai. Real quick guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We noticed that about 75% of the people who view our videos aren't actually subscribed. So you can't expect to watch one video and win a fight. And if that's why you're watching these videos, make sure you subscribe and get those fights before your opponent does. So let's take a look at the program. Ready to jump some rope? I was born ready. Let's go. <laughs> All right, before we start with anything physical, we gotta cover one of the most important aspects of martial arts and Muay Thai, and that's respect. So in Thailand and in Muay Thai, we often do the why, which is bringing your hands together and bringing them up to your forehead. Uh, we often use the phrase sawadee ka. If you're a man and if you're a woman, you say sawadee ka. It just means like, how are you in a respectful way, okay? So bringing your hands up to your forehead, maybe when you enter the gym, before a drill, or if someone teaches you something like your coach or your teammate, do the why, say thank you, pay your respects. That being said, let's take a look at the physical stuff. So if you join a Muay Thai gym, most likely the first exercise they're gonna have you do is jumping rope. And this is a Thai style jump rope. You notice that the tube is a little bit thicker. This thing's a lot heavier. So it's more conditioning on the forearms and on the calf muscles. The other thing is here, you can see that Ricardo's got his boxing shoes on because he's a boxer. You gotta take those off. We're going, we're going barefoot in Muay Thai. So you gotta take those off before you start. All right. All right, so we're gonna go for five minutes straight. Uh, certain gyms are gonna have you do one, two, maybe three rounds. So that's 15 minutes of jumping rope. You wanna get used to that. You wanna get the calf muscles strong. And the other thing that you gotta be wary of, seriously, because once this happens, you're gonna be like, why didn't you warn me? When this thing hits your feet, you miscalculate, it stings like a son of a gun, all right? So <laughs> be ready for that. When it happens, poker face, just keep going through. Pain doesn't affect you. All right, all right, give it a go. We're just gonna go for a couple seconds, yeah. Ooh, fancy boxer. All right, so the rhythm of jumping rope, it's one rotation of the rope and he hops once. It was explained to me before that when you're jumping rope, you want to jump just enough to slide a piece of paper underneath. If it's a little bit of an exaggeration, you want to jump just a little bit higher, but you don't want to jump too high, you're going to waste too much energy. So notice his rhythm. He's going left, right, left, right. You can also just both feet jump off the ground same time. You can do sort of a jumping jack motion. Either way, you just want to start to get this rhythm down. When you first start, it's probably going to be two hops for one jump. You just want to try to time it so that one rotation, one jump. Like I said, try to hit five minutes. Cool, time. Now for the next five to 15 minutes, they're going to have you do shadow boxing. And as beginners, Ricardo's not a beginner when it comes to shadow boxing, at least in the boxing world. But when you start working in kicks, elbows, clinching, people kind of freeze up. They're like, what do I do? They want some sort of choreography to follow. And that's not how fighting works. It's not, a, it's not a movie fight scene, right? You need to give and take. You need to move with your, part, your opponent. So the best thing that I would suggest is try to visualize someone in front of you. And if you can't, have someone move with you. And you can base all of your movements off of distance. So let's just say that Ricardo's shadow boxing. So let's just see basic boxing, shadow boxing, and how that looks. Right, so he's moving around, he's working his jab, he's got good exit strategy, he's not just working offense, he's also working his defense, creating angles. He's not just facing in one direction. So what this would look like if I was standing in front of him would be like this, he's moving with me. Right? I'm creating angles and he's got to adjust with me. So the, the sooner that you can start to visualize that opponent in front of you, the more realistic that your shadow boxing is going to be. That being said, that's a little bit more advanced. You guys are beginners. Let's go over some set combos that you can work on. Ricardo needs to work on his kicks, so we're going to get there. First thing, let's go over the stance. All right, so let me see your boxing stance. This is how most people are going to stand when they think about an athletic fighting stance, right? It's a little bit more bladed, meaning his hips aren't facing me. His left hip is more forward than his right hip. His feet are facing inward, right? His toes are facing inward, and that's good for boxing. It gives you good pressure on your lead foot when you throw the jab, but that's no good in Muay Thai because if I throw a low kick, it's going to be too hard for him to lift his leg up and check. So what you're going to do, Ricardo, is you're going to stand with your eyes and your balls facing in the same direction. That's how it was described to me. Yeah, so your hips are going to be squared. The lead foot now is facing forward at minimum or even out towards the outside as opposed to the inside. So you're going to have to sort of rotate that leg a little bit. Yeah, and bring that left foot out just a little bit more and bring it back towards you a little bit. So you're a little bit more narrow. You're much taller in Muay Thai. In boxing, we want to get low. We want to get underneath the punches. We want to have a good foundation, good base. In Muay Thai, we're a lot taller. So let's try putting the weight on your rear foot and just tap this lead foot. 
Good. So this is more of a defensive stance. This is if someone's throwing kicks, you want to be able to check or if you want to throw a teeth. So what we're going to do is throw the lead front push kick by lifting the knee up, extending forward, try to hit with the ball of the foot, chamber, and back down. Yeah. So we're here, and what I like doing with my hands is creating little circles. See these little circles? Yeah, exactly. Look at this guy. He's a natural. Good. So now we throw the teeth. Boom. Good. As you do that, you're just going to swing this arm down. So you kind of make a scissor motion. Yeah. Gives you a little bit more oomph. Boom. Pop the hips forward. Good. And again. Not yeah. bad, not bad. So what I like doing when I throw the teeth is try to hit with the ball of the foot. It gives me a little bit extra range. Some people go flat foot. It's more surface area. It's more of a push motion. This one kind of stabs. This one's more of a push. Either way, that's the front push kick. All right. So now what we're going to do is just work in the jab. So we've got the jab and then the teeth. We bounce, we jab, and we teeth. Good. So one at a time. So jab, teeth. Yeah, so he's wanting to step forward a lot on that jab, and that's bringing your weight forward. So you don't want to do that too much in Muay Thai. It's more upper body with the punch. So it's more of a flick from the shoulder so that you're not out of position for the teeth. Oh, so so kind instead of, just, of using my legs, more of an arm punch? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Oh. Boom. Yeah, but try not to fall forward. Oh, so okay. So when you throw it, you throw the teeth, and we should be able to be right back in position. Okay. Nice and balanced. Yep, pull it back, and then teeth, yeah. So that was good, that was good movement there. I like that you did it slow. Guys, if you can't do things fast, or I'm sorry, if you can't do things slow, you shouldn't be doing it fast. One thing you're gonna hear me say a lot is balance and structure, which is probably the most important thing in Muay Thai. You wanna be balanced, you wanna have structure. If I can disrupt his structure, if I can knock him off balance in a fight, that's what's gonna give me points. So if I throw a kick and he blocks it, but he falls over, that's points for me. If I can sweep him and knock him down, obviously it looks great in the judge's eyes for me. So again, balance and structure, always think of that. When you're moving around, when you're throwing your punches, when you're throwing your kicks, are you off balance or do you have perfect structure? Okay, good. Let's just do the opposite side. So now we're gonna do the cross, which is gonna be the rear hand, straight punch. Good, he's a boxer, he looks good. Cool, pivot on that rear foot, very nice. Now bring that hand back. Good, now what we're gonna do is just put the pressure on the lead foot and we're just gonna throw the rear teeth. Not bad. Swing that arm down now as you do it. A little more oomph. Boom. There you go. Yeah. And this is going right to the solar plexus, the stomach area. Boom. Good. Exactly. Give me two more like that. Yeah. Beautiful. Good. So now we have four techniques. We've got the jab, the cross, the lead teeth, and the rear teeth. So now I want you to move around. Imagine there's someone moving with you. Work the jab. If he's a little bit further away, throw the teeth. And then we'll put a little power on it. Throw the cross. Throw the rear teeth. Okay. Such a boxer. <laughs> okay. There you go. Not bad. Oh, this feels so weird. <laughs> You're doing great. Look at him. Uh, yeah. Remember how important the retraction is of our punches when we box, right? Okay. Not just pushing it out, but pulling it back. It's the same thing with our kicks. So instead of just falling forward, throw the kick and pull it all the way back. Knee to your chest. And that'll help with your balance and structure. Yeah. I don't even think you realized you did that. You faked the teeth and threw the jab. Did I? Yeah, you did. There you go, good. Good. Give me a lead teeth, rear teeth. Boom, boom. March into it. Lead teeth. Yeah, nice. One more rear teeth. Time. Check. Teeth. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, defensive stance is going to be much more square. The question there was, I felt my, he said, I felt myself blading a little bit, meaning like the, the foot was turning inward, I was turning my stance a little bit, is that okay? And yeah, I mean, these are just suggestions. In Muay Thai, you're gonna be more squared than you would be in boxing, but there's gonna be times where you're gonna be a little more boxing heavy and your stance is gonna blade a little bit more. Or maybe you just wanna be a little bit more mobile and move around the ring, and then your stance is gonna change a little bit. But if the pressure, if the pressure's coming on, maybe I'm up against the ropes, then I'm gonna start to get squared because I wanna be able to check the low kicks. I wanna be able to keep them away with this. So the pressure's on my rear foot, hips are squared, and this leg is just ready to go, all right? 
Good, so now let's talk about throwing the roundhouse kick. It's probably gonna be the kick that you throw the most to the legs, to the body, to the head, and people seem to have the most trouble with this. It's different than a Taekwondo style snap kick. A lot of us have taken Taekwondo or karate as kids where the leg comes up, we snap, we retract, and come down. It's good if you have those mechanics down, but when you're doing it in Muay Thai, it's much more of a baseball bat swing. It comes from the hips and it's meant to follow through. It's meant to chop people in half or to chop legs off. Not actually, but that's the intention, right? So what we're gonna do is, from our stance, we're gonna take a cheat step with our lead foot. We take that step at a 45 degree angle and that starts to already stretch our hips. Naturally, our body wants to go like this. And we're just gonna go with that flow, but we're gonna lift our knee up, aim with that, and the arm swing is very important when we throw the roundhouse kick. So what we're gonna do, let me demonstrate once in full. And again. Okay, so that's a high kick. We can also do that to the legs. It changes a little bit. But every, every, every step is pretty much the same. So what we're doing is when we take our step, this is when our arms start to shift. And what I do is I say the lead arm reaches for the gun in the holster. Yep, and then the rear hand reaches for the opposite shoulder. Now this is actually a guard. This is a defensive guard where if you start to take that, that kick, that step, and I throw a punch, your chin, your head, for the most part, is being guarded. Now, as you throw the kick, we're gonna assist with our arms, we're gonna get a swinging motion, which is gonna twist our hips, twist our shoulders, and that's when we fire and extend the kick off. But again, we're aiming to follow through, so we're gonna spin in a full 180 motion when we do it. So, all of that in mind, taking the cheat steps, swinging the arms, kick and follow through 180. Let me see what you got. All right. Um, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Good. Oh, I've, ow. I've heard something pop yeah. Was that hit? Oh. Shoulder. <laughs> Um, so do it without thinking about it now. Yeah, try to get a more fluid motion. Don't think about it step by step. Yeah, there you go. Oh, good. Nice. All right, we cheated off camera. We practiced a little bit, so he got it done naturally. If you don't look as good as Ricardo your first time doing it, don't worry about it. I know people who've been practicing it for years and still just haven't had that moment where it clicked for them. You just got to rep it out like anything else. You got to spend the time. You got to practice doing it. So now we got the jab. We got the teep. We got the cross. We got the rear teep. And we got the roundhouse kick with the rear leg. There's also roundhouse kicks with the switched leg, with the lead leg. We're not going to cover that in today's video. What we are going to do is a rear knee. Knee is another staple. We're going to do an elbow, do a little bit of clinch, and then we'll move on towards the end. All right? So what we're gonna do with the rear knee is we're gonna march into it. So I'm almost like I'm about to throw a teep, right? We lifted our knee up and then we threw it, but I'm not actually gonna extend my leg. I'm gonna march down and I'm gonna stab the ground with the ball of my foot and I'm gonna use that to bring my knee up. Yeah, not bad. And the trajectory of the knee, a lot of people wanna go up towards the sky and go like this. That's probably gonna hit someone in the groin and it may work in a street fight, but in Muay Thai, we wanna penetrate through them. We wanna go with a shish kebab, like a spear. So we're going through. We're going through their spine when we do it. And you notice I do a bit of a quick angle. Motion. Yeah. So my heel comes to my butt, and then I also pop the hip forward by sort of pivoting out a little bit, but I want to stay on the ball of my foot, the support leg. So it's boom. My arms go up overhead, and the idea of this here is grabbing onto your arms. So I'm going like this. So if you're standing just in a match, I would go here, grab your hands, and pull you into the knee or pull down just to get your hands and negate you from throwing punches. Boom. And back down. When you throw the knee, you shouldn't fall forward. So I shouldn't go here and fall into a switch stance. I should be able to have enough balance and structure to throw the knee and come back. So it takes a lot of hit, pop forward. Boom. Yeah, not bad. This is another hard one. This is one that took me years to get down. Another one that was taught to me by Mark Delagrati was touch your head with your fingertips and then touch your hips with your fingertips. Yeah, and that's just a little exaggeration motion. You wouldn't do that all the way through in a fight, but it's a good way to just remind yourself, bring your hands back up and get that swinging motion. Oh, oh man, that was low. <laughs> no groin shots. So it's gonna take some work and it, it's, you have to feel it to where it comes up and forward. Now, it's not two steps like that, but it is a forward motion. And what you can do to practice guys at home is just walking knees. If you ever go to Thailand and they tell the kids to warm up, they take their school shoes off, they kick them off, and they start warming up and they go. 
and they'll do that for about 10 minutes straight. It's a hell just, of a warm up. Yeah, just getting the hips warm, getting the motions down, getting the mind right. So just left, right, left, right. Yeah. And again, try to always raise the heel. Get off flat foot. Oh. Yeah, it's going to take time. Boom. Boom. Not bad, not bad. He'll get it. He needs practice. All right, let's go over elbows. We'll do a basic clinch, and then uh, we'll talk about some stretching, and we'll just talk about format of how they're going to be practicing this if you go to a gym. So the elbow is all the mechanics of throwing a left hook, a right hook, even a cross are the same. You just have half of an arm now, right? So we don't have this appendage here. It's going to be right here. So what we have to do is still rotate the hips and shoulders. We still step with the feet because we have to cover the distance, but you really do want to aim to hit with just the tip, all right? It's not a forearm, which would be here hitting with this part. That can do yeah. damage. But if we want to cut, yeah, we hit with the edge. So we really have to work on precision. Just like when we throw our punches, we try to hit with these two knuckles. We can hit with the whole hand, but if we want to cut, if we want to knock someone out, we try to concentrate it here. If we want to cut with an elbow, we want to try to get right here. So what we're going to do is just throw just a horizontal elbow right here. Yeah, actually not bad at all. His thumb faces him when he does it, right? So throw that and then hold there, freeze. So if you spin over here, just so we can show the people at home, his thumb's facing him. Right, boom, hand is open. Oh. If you, yeah, no, you're good like that. Just relax. If you squeeze your hand, squeeze tight fist, did you notice how his muscles flex? See that right there? That's just padding the elbow, the forearm, right? We want, just in case if he doesn't hit with his tip right here and he hits with the forearm, we still wanna hit with bone. So if your hand is open, it's gonna be more bone. It's gonna be hard and it's gonna hurt a lot more. It's gonna more likely cut my face open. So keep the hand open and relaxed. It's gonna take less energy as well. Thumb towards you. Oh, yeah, once more. Oh, beautiful. And then let me see a left elbow, so you're just gonna step with your left foot as you do it. Boom. Oh. Boom. Oh. There you go. Beautiful. Nice. And there's different elbow variations. There's up elbows, there's down elbows, there's spinning elbows, there's lawnmower elbows, as I call them. But just for the sake of this, you're probably not gonna be throwing these if you're just getting started or um, not getting into uh, pro fighting, right? Usually amateurs don't have elbows in them yet. But it's good to practice. It's good to have the mechanics down so that when you do start competing, you're not starting off fresh. You already know what you're doing. Do I yell like all the Muay Thai guys, you know? Yeah, that's that's lesson 101. Is every time you throw a kick, away. No. <laughs> now we're gonna be on the heavy bag. So uh, if you if you join a gym, it's very often that it's gonna be in this format. Jumping rope, shadow boxing, and then partner drills or they're gonna have you jump on a bag depending on how many people are there, depending on the format, depending on how many classes, or I'm sorry, how many coaches are there. So now we're gonna go on the bag and I'm gonna give you guys some combos that you can work on. So Cardo, if you would. So, <laughs> look at him, he's, all, he's learned a whole new martial art and now he's feeling like a brand new man. All right, so let's go uh, lead jab, lead teep. Let's just do that for now. Lead jab, lead teep, there you go, oh, nice. Look at this guy, he's got it. The natural. So again, lead jab, lead teep. Good. Now see how that bag's swinging and it comes swinging back at you? Uh -huh. When it does, I want you to then throw a right roundhouse kick. So it's going to be lead jab, oh. lead teep. The bag comes swinging back like right now. And you catch it with the rear roundhouse kick. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. So real quick. Um, Depending on the range. So again, I'm going from a jab to a teep. I kind of want to see how this bag's moving. So I may not even hit him with the jab. I may just use it to flick it in his face and then throw the teep. I push him back, the bag comes swinging back. And when I throw the roundhouse kick, I want to hit right about here. I don't want to hit with just my foot because I could hyperextend my ankle or just do damage to the small bones of my foot. I want to hit with the lower half of my shin. So you notice when it hits, when it makes contact, I'm hitting with the lower half of my shin. So it's jab, it's teep. Round kick. Okay. And doesn't have to be super quick, doesn't have to be jab teep because even for me that's kind of hard there. Maybe I'll push it back, I'll push it back, and then I'll catch it. So again, all about range. Let's try that again. Okay. Teep. Much better. Yes. Good. One more time. Follow the movement of the back. Jab. Teep. Good. And very good. Okay, so now let's go with a lead teep rear knee, okay? We're going to use that marching rhythm. So I throw the teep. When it comes down, I stab the ground with the ball of my foot, and then I march in to the knee, remember, head to hips. So I go with the lead teep. 
boom, march, lift, and back down. Try not to fall forward. So I use the bag to kind of push me back All right. in position. Not bad, yeah. Try to go straight, straight to him with the knee. All right. Not round. In here. Less round. Don't go around this way. Go through. Okay. One more time. All right. Got work to do, but this man's a natural. I like it. Now we're going to work some elbows. So let's go with the right hand cross. Step in, because if we just throw an elbow from here, we're not going to hit him. Got to get a little bit closer. So we go right hand, step, right elbow. Right hand, step, right elbow. Step. Yes. Good. Beautiful. He's showing off now. He knows how to transfer his weight. <laughs> Good stuff. So if you're not on the heavy bag, then they're probably going to have your partner up. Let's real quick talk about how to hit the tie pads and how to hold the tie pads. So same idea, right? You're, I'm giving you a target and you're hitting it. So if I lift this up and I say jab, he's going to throw a jab, right? So it's his left to my left. If I lift this up and I say cross, now he's showing off. He's showing how good his boxing is. If I want to hold for a, or real quick, so with those, I'm kind of slapping. I'm giving them reciprocated force. A lot of people go cactus arms and then their shoulders get blown back. So I'm meeting him half, not halfway. If I meet him halfway, I jam his punches up. I don't want to jam his punches up. I still want him to get full extension, but I don't want him to blast my shoulders. All right, so it's just a little bit of a slap, like a high five his knuckles. I think there's a cross, a high five his knuckles, okay? The roundhouse kick. Now be accurate with these because a lot of people tend to kick too high or kick too low. Yeah. So aim with your knee, and what I'm doing is I'm bringing the aim tops. The yeah, aim with the knee. That's sort of your aimer, right? Beep, 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 beep. And then knowing that this lower half of my leg is going to be an extension of my knee. All right. So I aim with this, knowing that that's where the kick is going to go. All right. As the person holding pads, I go with the corners together, so I make sort of an A shape, and I keep it close to my body. A lot of people want to reach out here like this and bend over. Let it come to you, all right? So when I hold the pads, I tie them together. I like them to be a little bit looser. Some people prefer them tight. And then I grab the tops and I keep my thumbs on the outside. Don't grip it. Keep your thumbs next to your index finger and over top this way, okay? Pull it close to me and he throws that round kick. And again, I kind of just reach in, or not reach, but I lean into it just a little bit to get that reciprocated force. Again, yeah. Good. He's got a nice snap on his kick. This man did a little taekwondo, I can tell. Good, kicks. One more time. Good. Yeah, the only thing I would I would critique there, and again, if you're working with beginners, you don't want to over critique, but I would just want to see a little bit more pivot on that support leg, just to try to turn and face away when you throw that roundhouse kick. So those toes should be facing the fight to slow down right. by the time the kick lands. Yeah, better. A little bit more, a little more hit. Good, good stuff. Uh, if I throw the teep, if I have a belly pad on, cool, but if, I can also do this. He throws the teep here, the front push kick, either one. Boom. Yeah, with the rear. Good. You got to push me back, though. Knock me back. Uh -huh. There you go. One more. Good. So we got the jab, the cross. When we're holding for elbows, I'm just going to hold it close to my face. Realistic target. I got to be careful. Yeah, and then just that right no. elbow. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Boom. Yeah, it's hitting with the tip of the elbow. Boom. Good. One more. There you go. We got the teeps, the round kicks, the punches, the elbows. How about the knee? So we can hold it with one and go here. Boom, or I can hold with two. Go here. Okay. So I'm just protecting myself as a pad holder. I'm giving a reciprocated force, a realistic target, and make sure you communicate properly. All right, let's talk about clinch real quick. We have an entire video with Petch Boon Chu on our channel with the clinch, and he breaks down so much in that video. I remember that, that personal training session and then watching the footage really changed my mind and explained so many things to me when it comes to the clinch because it's an art in itself. That being said, we're gonna go over really basic stuff. If you join a gym, maybe after the first month, depending on where you're training at, they may introduce the clinch to you. If they do, I want you guys to just understand what you're doing. So the first position they're probably gonna put you in is what they call 50-50 or a neutral clinch. So you're gonna take your right hand, grab the back of my head, my hair's, I haven't gotten a haircut in a while. Don't mind me. 
So yeah, and you want your, your forearm to be down on my collarbone and across my neck and bring your hand a little bit higher towards the crown of my head. Yeah, because if it's lower around my neck, I can use my back muscles to resist. But if you have a little bit higher, now I have to use the small muscles in my neck, right? So I'm less likely. And you want to try to pull my head down here so that you can knee me in the face. Boom. All right, so I'm going to be doing that to you too. Well, what are we doing with our left hand? A lot of people will teach this. Um, I don't like this as much as this, getting on the inside. So if you can get your hand on the inside and get bicep control, yeah. Right here, this is really good because I can just pull down and I'm already starting to break his clench a little bit. Right, And then once we get a little bit more advanced, we can talk about throwing elbows from here. But what I like about this is I'm halfway to the swim motion to get a dominant clinch. I'm going in and I'm grabbing the back of my hand. So now both hands are on the inside, both hands are on the back of his head. So now I can start to control him. They call this the plum. Not the most dominant in, in uh, Muay Thai. There's a lot of ways to negate it. But if you're in the beginner realm or even in MMA, a lot of people freak out when they're at, in that position. Think about Anderson Silva against... Uh, is it Rich Franklin, I believe? Well, he wouldn't know. He doesn't watch him no. <laughs> Um, But getting that position, a lot of people freak out there. So a lot of times you're going to battle for that, and then you can start sweeping and throwing knees. When you practice in the clinch with a partner, go back to this position here, so grab in here. Whether we're on the forearm or we got bicep control, what you're going to be doing is throwing knees. And see how wide we are right here? See how much space there is? That's no good because I can really rip a knee here, get, get in and, and do some damage. In Muay Thai, it's hip to hip. And I know it feels really uncomfortable for most people, but you wanna be here because now I can't knee to his body, right? It's his hip that's negating me. So every time I try to throw a knee, he's just gonna shove his hip in. You just kinda, of, yeah, exactly, yeah. To create or close off that distance so I can't hit you with the knee. Exactly right. So you wanna stay in nice and close. When we do throw knees from here, if we're in super close, we throw side knees and we bring our leg out and we slap in. In a fight, I wanna hit with the kneecap when I'm training with my partner and I don't want to hurt him, I hit with the soft part of my thigh. All right, so I go here and I just go through the motions knowing that if it were a fight, I would turn it over and I would hit with the kneecap here. If I have distance to throw it up the center, I'm gonna to get to do a lot more damage this way. Okay, there's a push-pull motion too. The more I can control his head and disrupt his balance and structure, the more I'm gonna be able to pull him into knees. Push, pull. Get this bicep control, push, pull. Maybe I switch to dominant. Push, pull, whip, knock him off balance, land knees, go for sweeps, elbows, or disengage, and then I can go back to my punches, my teeps, my round kicks. All right, so that's just a basic understanding of clench. Okay, guys, before we, uh, before we take a look at some stretches, do you have any questions based on what we went over? Actually, yeah. Uh, when you had me in the clench, you were ragdolling me around. Yeah, yeah. How do I, how do you get, get, around, get so, out of that? So get me in that dominant clench, both hands on the back of my head pinning your elbows together. So if you're controlling me, you're spinning me and knocking me off balance, the easiest one to remember is cross face. And you wanna be, you wanna be careful when doing this with your partner because you're not trying to hurt anyone. But what I'm gonna do is take my hand, I'm gonna push his jaw in the opposite direction. That creates a little bit of space here. Now I can get that bicep control or swim, right? So swimming is, is one of the most common things. We're in this neutral position clench. I'm gonna swim to get to the back of your head and I want you to take your hand and swim on the inside of my arm and then grab the back of my head. And look what happens when we do that, we end up back just opposite. So if we keep doing that, you swim that arm through, grab the back of my head, we just kind of end up in this position. Now what we're battling for is to get to here, right? Or to get here. But if we're both doing that, it's gonna be a mirror or the opposite. We're just gonna be doing the same thing back and forth. So that's, that's the battle, that's the chess game. Any other questions? No, that's it. I covered it all, I'm a good coach. All right, let's look at some stretches. So we're gonna sit down for this one, throw my hat back on. So let's go, yeah, let's first do a butterfly stretch. So bottoms of your feet together, bring your heels in and drive your knees down to the ground. A lot of people want to flutter when they hear the word butterfly and that's good in the beginning, but you ultimately want to get a static stretch. So you're just driving those knees down. And what's the most important part of stretching? Uh, <laughs> breathing. Breathing. Gotta be breathing. breathing. Gotta be breathing. It's a way to, it's a time to focus on your breathing to get maximum uh, uh, optimization of your breath, but also just to open up the body, open up the lungs. That's what your body needs most right now anyways. Oxygen, so make sure you're giving it what it needs. All right, so we do this for about 30 seconds. What I like doing is five breaths, five controlled breaths. And a controlled breath should be at least four seconds in and four seconds out. So. Five of those should be about 
45 seconds to a minute. Then we're gonna go legs straight out in front of us. We're gonna hit the hamstring. So we're gonna bring our chest towards our shins, keeping our back straight at first. Once you get to the point where you can't reach it anymore, then you can have a heavy head and arch your back. And then this position again, we're gonna go for five breaths. From here, let's switch things up a little bit to a low lunge. So we'll have the right leg out in front, drag that left leg, leg behind. Yeah, and you're gonna shift your energy forward so you feel that stretch right in the hip flexor right here, which yeah. we've been feeling a lot, right? When throwing the teeth yeah, and throwing yeah. the knees, the round kicks. So you definitely wanna make sure that you stretch to this area here. So bring that energy forward again, we'll do five breaths and then we switch to the opposite side. Five breaths. And that's basically it, guys. I mean, there's tons of different stretches that you can do. We have tons on our channel, whether it's more upper body, if you're feeling more in the low back, you can do more twists, but mostly where you're gonna be feeling it is probably the calf muscles and the hip flexors and legs and glutes. So I guess one last one, let's do, a, let's do a calf stretch and then we'll be done. So a super simple one that you can do is just stand up and just driving that, that heel back, keeping that leg straight, you should start to feel it here. Gotta keep that heel down at the mat you start to lift it, you start to bend the leg, then you're not gonna feel it as much. And then five breaths, you'd switch it to the opposite side. But especially jumping rope with that heavy rope, throwing knees, throwing uh, round kicks over and over and over again for an hour straight, you're gonna feel it a lot in your calves and you wanna make sure that you're stretching them. So stretching is super important. Even if you don't do it in class, I recommend that you do it immediately after class or when you get home. All right guys, there you have it. That's your Muay Thai crash course, sort of a what to expect if you're about to join a gym or if you're about to go to Thailand, or like I said, we're going to Singapore next week. We're leaving uh, Friday. So you got a couple of days and we still have some spots open. If you're in the area or you feel like booking a last minute trip to Singapore, link's in the description below. You can buy your tickets. And uh, if you have any questions, please email my wife who's holding the camera right now. She's very helpful. She'll get you discounts on hotels and that kind of thing. It's a great time. You guys are going to love it. It's a week long training vacation at Avav MMA, one of the nicest facilities I've ever been at. You guys are going to have a great time, make some friends, make some lifelong memories and hang out with us too. But until then, I'm Shane. I'm Ricardo. Fight tips for the underdogs.